Okay, so now we're going to learn how to code and analyze GSR data. So in order to do that, you'll need your same Excel sheet. Um, now normally when you're really analyzing GSR, this Excel sheet will already be filled completely in because the heart rate will have already been analyzed. Um, so then we need to open the Acquire Knowledge Program 2 and then click Cancel. Then we need to go to File and Open. Now what's really important that you make sure is normally if when you're really analyzing GSR this will not be entitled Florel Data Excel Template Updated Spring 2014. This will be a participant number and it will say smooth. So you need to make sure that the participant number on the Excel file and the participant number on the Acquire Knowledge file matches. It's really important that you make sure they match. And you're going to want to make sure you open the smooth Acquire Knowledge file. Okay, so we need to get rid of that. So in order to do GSR, you need to make sure that this is on min and max. These don't really matter to us right now. We just need to make sure this is min and max and that they are on channel 2 and they are blue. And in fact, they are on min and max. So now you need to scroll over to the beginning and click on seconds and then zoom to 5 seconds. That just helps smooth out the GSR data, which is the little blue line. So now we need to find the time markers, the time marker numbers from the Excel file to know where to start coding the GSR data. So, and normally, you know, this, this will be filled out too for you, but just in case it's not, the, um, the time marker number is the same marker that would normally be here after the heart rate's been coded. So, we're just going to pretend like they're there. And, you know, again, the way you get that is you make it, see that's N1, your first one's N1, click right there in the arrow as close to the middle as you can, so your time marker is going to be, uh, your time marker is going to be your time right here, 164.56. Okay, so that's, that's all you do for here, just in case this is not filled out or you're doing GSR first or whatever, that's how you get your time markers. I'll show you just one more. R1 right here. And then your time is 183.28. So that goes here. Okay, so once you get all of that filled in down to CR1, you're ready to start analyzing your GSR data. And the way you do that is you go back, okay, make sure your numbers match. And right here, click right here at your time marker and then highlight four seconds. But the problem with GSR is that it can be tricky. You see how this goes up? Well, you can only analyze while it's flat. So highlight until right here. Okay? So then right here, and under the tonic column, under Q, you are going to put the um, minimum number right here. So that's the negative point two seven 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 one and then your phasic is your maximum number which is right here. So that's negative zero point one zero three seven six. And you do the same thing for R one and so on and so forth. But this one this one's not really flat. As you can see, it makes a big dip. Um, it's probably flat enough to go to about right here. You just need to be careful with GSR because it, it can be tricky. You can't analyze data that's all over the place with a whole bunch of hills and bumps. But um, your tonic, once again, is your min number. So zero, or I'm sorry, negative 0.43182. And your phasic, once again, is maximum. So that is negative 0 
six, eight, nine. And you do that same process on down. But here's a good example. So when we go to N2, which is right here, you don't analyze this one at all. Because do you see that there's a huge dip here? If the, um, if the time marker slot is on, um, if, if, if the GSR is not flat at the time marker, then the data for that time marker cannot be used. If the data increases before 4 seconds, then you do not need to highlight all the way to 4 seconds. And that's the two examples that I just previously shown you. Now, if for some reason, okay, so this time marker is invalid, but let's pretend it's not. So, if for some reason your 4 seconds, which you see right here on delta T, that's the what you've highlighted. Now, I've only highlighted 0.4 seconds now but that's how you tell how many seconds you've highlighted. If your time marker is, if your second time marker is um, in the way of your four second highlighting, which as you can tell this one is, then you just highlight up to that time marker. And once again, your tonic number is the min number here, and your phasic number is the max number here. So then you go, you do that same process all the way down to CR1. And to take the difference, in this column, you just do phasic minus tonic. So you would do difference equals subtract, maybe, maybe not. Or whatever. Just do click this and then minus and then this. There you go. And you do the same thing. R minus Q. And you do that all the way down until CR1 is your last one. So that is how you analyze GSR. But once again, just keep in mind that if the GSR is not flat at your time marker, like this one is pretty I mean, I wouldn't analyze this one. But if it's not flat, you don't analyze it. If your time markers overlap your four second mark, then you just highlight up to the next time marker. If you have really good flat GSR, you highlight up to four seconds. And that looks like this. And you see your time once again with your delta T. And if for some reason, which was likely going to happen, you're analyzing GSR that's flat but then peaks, then you only analyze to the peak. So let's pretend this is flat. If this was flat, you would analyze it to right here where it starts to go up. So that's how you do GSR.